What is happening, YouTube? How y'all doing today? Uh, my name is Joe, just your average Joe, hanging out in the garage. Uh, man, the lighting is weird tonight. Uh, it is nighttime, so I don't know what's up with the lighting. The lighting looks a bit weird. Anyways, um, just your average Joe, hanging out in the garage. A little bit different video. It's night. It's almost. It's dusk. It's uh, it's, it's late. It's uh, what time is it? It's almost eight o'clock at night. So uh, today's been just one of them days. Uh, tomorrow's the 4th of July. So we've just been prepping and kind of getting ready for tomorrow. Um, hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Hopefully your sales have been amazing. Uh, hopefully you're also getting ready for 4th of July tomorrow. Have a good, have a, have a wonderful and awesome day. I uh, probably won't be on tomorrow, but I'll be back, uh, on Friday. Uh, we got some sales to go over. We got comments to go over. So yeah, we'll get started <clears throat> again. My name is Joe. Been hanging out and doing, well, been hanging out. You're hanging out with me just your average Joe. I've been doing eBay full time for eight years, uh, right around eight years and been buying and selling on eBay since 2000, long, long time. So, um, definitely, definitely can help if you guys have any questions or anything that I can help with. I'm certainly, I certainly enjoy answering the questions and comments. So drop a comment if you have anything that you'd like to cover as far as reselling goes or just anything you want to share. Um, I'm all, I'm all about it. So that's what we're going to start with right now is comments. Um, First comment that I have here is from Jesus says, Hey, average Joe, you need to start calling yourself powerful Joe, uh, knowledgeable and a great sense of humor, powerful combo. Thank you for the lessons and continued success. Cheers. Well, Jesus, I appreciate you, man. And my mom, my mom, you know, and both my mom and my dad are like, we hate that you call yourself just the average Joe. You're not just an average Joe. And I'm like, you know what? I, I am just your average Joe. You know what I mean? I just, I, 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 I may have some tricks up my sleeve and I may have some experience, uh, you know, in my, in, in, uh, in, in my bag. But, um, at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm just like everybody else, man. So, um, but definitely appreciate you. Jesus. Uh, appreciate you. Appreciate, appreciate your support and following and everything, uh, on the channel. Uh, I will go ahead and reply like I always do replied on newest video live. So, um, yesterday I didn't realize that the video didn't, uh, upload until like late last night. So that's why the, the, the video didn't post to like, I don't know, probably midnight ish time frame last night. It was late. Um, but I didn't realize all day I, I went into my, I went into my, uh, YouTube app and noticed that the video had like aired out the upload for the video had aired out. I uploaded it probably around I don't know, noon, one o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock, somewhere in that range. So at some point early yesterday afternoon, but I didn't go back and check it. Normally it uploads no problem. I've had that happen once or twice before, but normally it's pretty good. But uh, so I noticed it hadn't uploaded. So I just redid it and it uploaded super late. But uh, anyway, that's that's uh, I don't know. I guess I just need to check it from time to time just to, to make sure it's uploading right. Um Justin says, thanks for sharing. Uh, here in South Australia, you can't have permanent yard sales due to the interfering with street flow. I think you can do like two a month. Uh, well, technically, like if you're in the city here in the States, I don't believe you can set up a permanent yard sale in the city either. Like if you're anywhere in city limits. And technically, I want to say some, most cities have like an ordinance where you can only have like one or two yard sales a month anyway. So that's, I would say that's pretty similar, but if you live out in the country, cause that's where I was mentioning as far as sourcing, you have those people that kind of set up a permanent yard sale. Um, and like basically they're doing their business out of their house. So they're either a shed or a garage or another building they have on their property that they, that they make their, their, their store basically. And the one guy actually gets away with having to pay any property taxes or any sale, any, any form of like taxes for his store. Because all it is is because it's something to do with the ground not having like an actual floor. If he has dirt floor or pal in his case, he's got like pallets on the ground and they're covered with like these, I don't know, these huge heavy duty rugs. So um, I wouldn't really call them pallets, but they're basically pallets, but not pallets that like you have holes in them, but like a different type of pallet. It's basically plywood is what it is. He's got plywood down and he's got like these rubber, heavy rubber um mats that go over the plywood and that's the way he gets around having to pay i guess taxes to the sit uh, to the county uh because otherwise if you actually have a store in on your property you get you have to pay additional county taxes or additional property taxes or 
I don't know all the ins and outs, so don't don't quote me on any of this. He was just kind of telling me about it, and uh, I didn't really pay. I wasn't paying full attention. And it was also like two years ago when he was telling me, so I don't remember all the details. But anyway, I'm saying all that to say the the ones that are set up like that are typically in the in the county. They're not in the city. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's it's a it's a way to it's a way to go. He hasn't he hasn't worked a job in probably 15, 20 years. He's been doing full time. He's he's like that. Like he's a whole nother level though. I mean, like I said yesterday, he's got like 12 trailers full, pl big trailers, like huge trailers full of just stuff from storage cleanouts that he's yet to even get through yet. Um, like la this, th like he told me last week he did, tw he, he cleared out 12 storage units. You know what I mean? In one day, like he, this, the dude, the dude goes through stuff and, large volume um i mean in abundance so but anyway he but he has like four or five buildings on his property and i mean when you go on his property you can tell he's a junker man i mean there's stuff everywhere um but he does come across a lot of good stuff and he's told me stories where he's come across like crazy kind of stuff like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of like paintings and old military just uh i don't, I don't know just the gold silver cash like he's come across because he, he does it so much you know that he's come across some really good stuff so he's he's doing really well for himself i'll just say that but he's set up like a store at his, and is all his buildings on his property and he's open on the weekends usually thursday through sunday and i mean and he he he, he has pretty good prices so it's a good little honey hole to go to but um that's kind of a piggyback if you guys had watched the last episode about just places to source you know i'm sure you know, if you don't have any in your area, I'm sure there is. You just don't know where they are. There's people that actually set up their their home or property in a store like fashion. Uh, and, and and instead of selling on like the guy doesn't mess with eBay. He used to do eBay. The one I'm talking about this local here, he used to do eBay, but he doesn't do eBay anymore. He does pretty much all through market. Mainly if he does anything online, it's marketplace pickups and they just come to his his, his spot and, and, you know, do the deals. But he's just, it's, it's a storefront. It's his house, but it's all the buildings he has. He's open Thursday through, through Sunday and you go shop and find all sorts of crazy stuff. But anyway, yeah, like I said, I don't think you can do that in the city, the inner city. There's ordinances to basically, you know, if you had, if if you, if he was in the city, he couldn't do that. He they would have they would make him clean up and like because his property is pretty. From the outside looking in, it just looks like trash and junk. But he has a lot of good stuff. So, uh, but anyway, uh, let's keep going on the comments. What do we got next? We got uh, we got Yarina says, "Thank you again, Joe. As always, very helpful. I, I, I'm glad I could help. Always those those completed listings. Yeah, definitely want to check that. Um, hope you and your family are having a great Fourth of July. We're going camping again to the RV resort. Man, I love our I love camping. We have a camper as well. We go to a lake. Uh, in fact, July 22nd through August 3rd. I, I I'll throw some YouTube videos out there, but they aren't they won't be much." uh, during that time frame, So, but we'll be up at a local, local, um, uh, lake called Jordan Lake up by Raleigh, North Carolina. We'll be there for like, like I said, however long that is 13, 12 days or 11, 12 days, uh, camping. We got a camper. So we'll go up there. We got a jet ski. We got a boat. So same thing. I, I already read about you. You've got the boat. Um, so, um, going camping an RV resort went on the beach one day, but, uh, but the boat went, to the beach one day on the boat, but what weather it's not ideal, but the weather's not ideal right now. So the RV will do it then. Yeah. I know how that goes with the weather. That's for sure. But enjoy camping. Camping is one of our favorites. Uh, you know, instead of me and my wife and the family, well, I, I guess we, if, if we're going on a, on a, on a me and my wife vacation or family vacation, we're, we're more apt to do lake time and just get away versus doing like Disney or, you know, like, tropical resorts or cruise or, you know, just, it's, we just enjoy going to the lake. Uh, we enjoy our camper. We enjoy our water toys, our jet ski. My wife loves her jet ski. I love my boat, you know, so, you know, the kids like tubing. Um, so it's just a good time. It's just a good time. It's a good time to get away. I'm off, you know, I don't have to worry about either one of my businesses, whether it be eBay or my helmet, my football helmet, memorabilia business, uh, on Facebook, or I don't have to worry about eBay at all. 
So it's just nice to get away. Uh, obviously, it's nice to see sales come through when I'm on vacation. But otherwise, I do do picking while I'm out, like usually on Saturdays and Fridays. I'll still go out and do go picking up in the Raleigh area while I'm while I'm there first thing in the morning. Uh, and I may do a couple marketplace deals as well while I'm there. So I'll still try to source a little bit while I'm on vacation. But it's just nice to, to and that's because I enjoy it. It's not really considered work for me to do to source. It's fun. You're just buying stuff. You just look for good deals. So, but, uh, but yeah, so enjoy your vacation, enjoy your RV and your boat. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'll be doing the same thing here in about three weeks. So, uh, good times. And again, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to drop it. You know, I'm here to help. Great. Thanks a lot. Says garage sales are my number one source. The trick is to know which areas to visit. I avoid wealthy areas. Ah, I like it. And, and focus on the older parts of town says great. Thanks a lot. You nailed it on the head, man. You know, a lot of people ask me, uh, like when I go up to Georgia, my, my buddy in Georgia, uh, or down in Georgia, uh, I go there probably once every couple months. I'll go down to Georgia every few months. I'll go down to Georgia. And uh, um, the biz, the company I, I work with that I'm partnered with is Racky Sports, and they do football memorabilia. Well, they do all, all they have a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, I go down there because we're partnered with them. And, and one of my good buddies who started that business who i'm a part of uh it's called btg they're affiliated or or partnered with uh Racky sports and so he he moved from wisconsin to georgia uh flowery branch area gainesville area ish um, um so when i go to visit i go picking and stuff like that and it's funny because he's because it's the area he's in is quite overall it's a bit more upscale than the area that i'm in uh, so it's funny, you know, he'll be like, oh, you got to hit up those rich neighborhoods. You got to hit up those big rich, have those mansions. And I'm like, mm, nah, man, I, they don't usually yield any, any good results. I've, in my experience, uh, I've picked several different states and areas. Um, and anytime I, I go to a richer, more, per, more, more wealthy part of town, I'll just say like 90% of the time, they ain't much there. There's not much there. Either one of two things happen. Either A, they don't, they have a bunch of junk. It's more like decor and just junk. They don't really have anything good. Or they're the, the good stuff that they have out is priced like eBay. They're way overpriced. So there's no margins. It's, it's not worth it. So yeah, you might have a lot of good stuff, but you're, you're asking way too much. So um, that's my experience too. So I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, great. Thanks a lot. I, I agree. I I don't particularly like picking the rich neighborhoods or more wealthy neighborhoods. Uh, in my experience, those are not usually very good. So I'm glad somebody else has that same uh, per that same experience because that's that's uh yeah. So anyway, let me reply to yours. All right, next one up is Ryan's GoPro Chronicles. Ryan's GoPro Chronicles. I like that. I'm assuming you've got a GoPro and you go out chronicling. <laughs> I've got a GoPro too, but I don't, uh, I, I don't edit video anymore. Well, not to say I won't be editing videos at some point. Cause I'd got my GoPro. I've got footage. I go out. I don't, you know, I can, I got a new computer to do all that, but I just, I just haven't gotten that far yet. I, I enjoy doing this raw unedited right here in my garage, a little bit more intimate, you know, um, Obviously, I'm sure there's a lot of you that would like to see what's happening out in the field. And like maybe I've, I've always thought it'd be cool to like snippet all of my uh, negotiations with people because um, I, I always I always if my friends come with me and or customers that I'm buying from, I've had quite a many be like, man, you're such a good negotiator, man. You know, so like I think I'm pretty good at that. I like the little back and forth trying to negotiate or throw something else in on a deal, things like that. So I think that'd be cool to show that off. But. I'm just not good at editing. So there's that. And I, I don't have anybody to edit my stuff. So there's that too. Um, so one day I do have a new computer. I built one about four months ago now. It's a, it's, it's awesome. Um, so the plan, this one couldn't handle it. So that's why this one's down here now. It's pretty much strictly my eBay computer. Uh, but the one I have upstairs, my plan was to eventually do some editing, go out in the field more with the, with the, you know, the GoPro and, and, uh, you know, edit the footage, but that takes a lot of time. This I can I can do this I can I can discuss stuff answer questions comments show off what sold all from right here and then easy boom 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 post it and it's done so I'll, I like raw unedited the real deal holy field here we are uh, if I say something stupid I say something stupid if if it is what it is um um 
if I start rambling about other stuff, it is what it is. It's this is all overall and unedited. But but yes, I will eventually like to go that route. Anyway, his question is, what's a good way? I see I rambled a whole ton there, didn't I? So Ryan's GoPro Chronicles asks, what's a good way to get feedback on eBay? I've sold eight items and only two customers actually left feedback. So in my experience, Ryan, there's there's really only one, maybe two. There's a couple ways you can approach this. Um, what I used to do when I really cared about my feedback and I really wanted to try to get customers to do more feedback is to simply send them a message and say, hey, you know, I noticed you got your item. Hopefully everything, it's just a template. I'd have a template basically. So whatever it says, like, hey, I noticed you just, you got your item delivered. I just want to make sure that everything is good. You know, if everything checks out, if you could just leave me positive feedback that I'd appreciate it. It's, you know, I'm trying to grow my store or, or whatever, however you want to word it, the kind of thing, right? So you just send them an email and hopes that they will send you feedback. Now that's a dual edged sword. Two things can happen there. They they see it and they recall that, yeah, a good experience. Let me leave them feedback. And they, they actually do it. Well, actually three things can happen. B, they see it and they don't care and they keep moving or don't see it. And they, you know, you never get anything back from them or A, B and C, um, they didn't have the best experience. They didn't quite like the item. And so they're not going to do a return on it, but they're sure going to leave you like a neutral or something of that in a degree. So you, you could, you could be fishing for feedback that you might not want. Uh, in some of those cases. So, you know, it's, it's to each his own. I would say when I, I, I was the one that was sending emails out. Um, I make sure I leave them feedback every time. And sometimes you'll get a reply feedback cause you left one. So that, cause that, I believe that gives an alert that you just got feedback. Uh, maybe it, actually, I don't think it does. Never mind, I don't think it does. But if you, you leave feedback and then send a message to them, that's really the only thing you can do. Um, eBay's done a really good job now to basically remind you to leave feedback for your purchases or your buyers. Um, it didn't used to do that. So like when you go into your feedback and you have whatever uh, feedback you need to leave, if you go into it, it will show you everything that you've either bought or sold that, that, uh, that needs feedback still basically. And it used to not do that. So eBay is doing a better job of trying to get customers to provide feedback uh, by keeping that in their face kind of thing. Uh, but the only other thing you can do is really just send an email. And like I said, it's at that point, you know, it's one of a few things that'll happen. So you may, you will probably see some, 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 some feedbacks coming through that they wouldn't normally come through, but then you've also could leave yourself open to a negative or a neutral, uh, you know, cause a lot of customers won't, if a customer's disgusted or not happy with the situation, there are a lot of customers that just won't, they'll, they'll just like, you know, not purchase from you again, not, not, not get in touch with you, not say a word, especially if it's a lower, lower priced item, you know, if they, you know, so, you know, let's say condition wasn't quite what they expected or it delayed in shipping and they're just mad about the situation or I don't know, there's so many different things that can happen, you know, so then they could, they could voice that on the feedback, you know, like I had one dude, he left me positive, but he mentioned, and it doesn't matter because it's positive, but he mentioned something about a clothes were smelling while well, my clothes are out here in the garage. There, there's no smoke. There's no, no smell out here, you know, but he said there was a funky smell. And I'm like, well, thank God he didn't leave me a neutral. Like for really, like, what are you talking about? There's a smile. I didn't smell nothing. They smelled brand new. They were brand new shirts, uh, army shirts. But anyway, um, you know, luckily he didn't leave me neutral. He could have left me neutral, but, uh, you know, so, and, and he didn't let me know that, you know, oh, uh, these things have a bad smell to them, you know, so he could have just as easily been a douchebag and been like negative feedback. These clothes had a terrible smell to them. And I'd have been like, what? What are you talking about? You didn't even tell, because a lot of times they won't even tell you what's going on. Um, a lot of times they won't even give you the opportunity to fix it. They'll just leave you negative feedback. I've had that happen quite a bit, not quite a bit. I don't have a lot of negative feedbacks, but I've had that happen several times where people leave negative feedback, don't even give me an opportunity to fix it. Now, what I, what I can say there is I offer free returns, 30 day free returns. And I've called eBay many, uh, on many occasions in the past to have bogus feedback removed. 90% of the time they've taken it off and taken care of me, you know, especially if it's a case where like, I, you know, you're saying something's wrong, but you didn't even give me an opportunity to fix it. Like I had no opportunity to fix it. You know, I could do a free return. You know what I mean? I got free returns open. They could have returned it. Like they leave me negative feedback. I had no idea. Uh, like I said, eBay has been pretty good about helping out there, but to answer your question, poke at them, send them an email. That's really send them a message. That's all you can really do. Um, uh, that should help your feedback a little bit. 
you should see a little bit more feedback coming through if you send them messages. Uh, but just like anything else, 90% of the people are just going to delete it, ignore it, or forget about it. So uh, I'm not going to say it's, you're going to see it a tremendous increase, but you can only do what you you can only do what you can control. What you can do to do that and what you can do to control that is really just send an email. That's that's within your power and your control. Outside of that, there's not a whole lot more that I can think of that you can really do uh, to try to get customers to give you feedback. Um, I've had people leave notes in their packages, so you could do that too. You know, like a little note in your in your you know whatever, like a little card or something in your package. You know, when they get it and it says, "Oh, thank you know, hope your purchase went well. Make sure you, you know, don't forget to leave us positive feedback. You know, if you have any issues, make sure you send me a message or whatever, whatever. However verbiage you want." Um, but I've had I've had some eBayers things that I've purchased that have cards in them as reminders. I would also say in that case, 90 percent of customers are just going to throw that away. You know what I mean? So but that 10 percent may make it worth it because you do get a little bit more people submitting feedback for you. So, you know, those are the things you can control is that kind of stuff. But outside of that, there's really not else much else you can do. Uh, hopefully that helped a little bit. Um. And like I said, I used to do the email. That's what I used to do uh, is the emails. I used to send emails afterwards and just say, hey, thank you for your purchase. You know, make sure to leave uh, positive feedback. It'd be greatly appreciated or something to that degree. Uh, and then the last one, the dark 25. Hey, Joe, thanks for the reply on the video. I'm actually subscribed to your channel on both of your YouTube accounts. Uh, you got uh, the other one, the uh, BTG one. I'll bet. Yeah, that's probably the BTG one. So I don't really do do much on that one, but I appreciate you subscribing in the dark. Uh, if there's anything I can do to help, man, uh, you know, let me know. Drop a comment. I'll be glad to help or, or dive into any particular subject. Always here to help. So that's the comments for yesterday through today. Uh, oh, Jesus just left something. Hey, what does this say? Uh, update. Riddell Speed Flex helmets sell like crazy. Motorola radios, walkie talkies also sell quick. I'm sour at, I'm sour e at my flea market. As always, congratulations and continued success. Cheers. Well, Jesus, um, you're correct on Speedflex helmets. If you can get them cheap, they do sell very well. They're like six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars retail. So if you can get them for like a hundred, hundred and fifty bucks, yeah, you know, or even you know anywhere, yeah, Speedflex helmets, any helmets really sell. It's funny you said that Riddell Speed Flex helmets. That's that's we 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 don't run those. We run Speed Authentic, but um, one of my other partner rooms that's part of our business runs a lot of Speed Flex helmets because those are like more of the high end stuff. I'm kind of like more mid tier, lower to mid tier, and then we have a room that does all high end stuff. And so all the Speed Flexes are in that room. Uh, I don't mess with them at all. But you're right, Speed Flex Speed Flex helmets do sell like crazy. Uh, and Motorola radios, walkie talkies. Yes. Agreed. I've, I've had, I've had my hands on a couple of those in the past. Uh, so there's sales uh, or there's comments. Uh, the next thing is we're going to cover sales. What I'm going to do here is actually, I think what I'm going to do is just, uh, I think I'm going to hold off on sales because I have nothing that's actually going to ship out until Friday. So I think what I'm going to do is just cut the video short and call it a night. And as of right now, I'll just tell you where I'm at. I've had one good sale. These finally sold. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll just say this. These finally sold. The tulip stands, which we'll cover this again on, on Friday. The tulip stands for Bose 901 speakers. If anybody knows about tulip stands for Bose 901 speakers, those just those sold today for $285 plus shipping. Um, I already sold the speakers probably two months ago, maybe three months ago. I sold the speakers because I had the speakers too. Those things were a pain to pack and ship, but I'm not scared of big stuff. So got those up out of here. I think I sold those for 400 bucks. Uh, those sold for 285. And then I also had the receiver for it or the, uh, yeah, the, the receiver, not receiver, the uh, equalizer that sold for like 225, if I'm not mistaken. I think I picked up the whole bundle for like 200. So I did pretty good there, I would say. Um, I think I had to give the guy a hunt, like a hundred dollar refund on the speakers. So I didn't make it as much as I should have, but you know, it still, still was like almost a triple up, which is not bad. Um, so anyway, yeah, like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to go over all the sales. I'm just going to cut it right now, but right now we're sitting on, we, we've had a pretty good day between yesterday and today. Now granted it's late today. So some of these sales came in this evening. Um, so, and then I'll continue adding to it today and tomorrow and then month, uh, Friday. 
we'll, we'll go over everything that sold and, and give you the total. But as of right now, I got eight sales for $479.08. I do have two items that I do need to do a label for because I didn't get them shipped out today. They were supposed to ship out today. So I'm going to do uh, those two labels right now. But I'm not going to. In fact, let me pull those items so I don't forget. Uh, Sturgis. Uh, that. One second, guys. I think it's this one right here. So this shirt sold for yep. Sturgis. Harley Davidson. Um, Sturgis. Fort Hood. Uh, is that the hog on there, I think? No, that's just like an army guy. But uh, anyway, so if you ever come across the 80s hog uh, Harley shirts, they're made. Oh, it, it's got a, I forget who makes them, but it's got their name on it. They, it's a, like a really rare shirt. Man, them shirts are thousands, guys. Thousands. We've come across, I've come across one once. Um, thousands. It's wild. It was at a, it was at the, uh, I didn't find it. My, my, my ex father-in-law found it, uh, when we were running our, our thrift store together before my wife took over it. And, uh, and, and before he was my ex father-in-law, <laughs> but anyway, he had found one at the, uh, local Goodwill or Hope Harbor. And, um, I forget the company that printed them, but the company name is on it. It's really rare, but it's the hog. 80s Harley Davidson shirts. If you if you come across them, look them up. It's I, I, you could have that rare one that's by whatever company. I don't remember the, if any of y'all know the company name that, that did those prints back in the 80s that had the hog Harley Davidson uh, like the actual pig. It was a pig hog. You know the artwork and everything of a, of a hog, and he's like on the Harley. And there's a whole bunch of different ones. But if you come across those, look it up. Don't think it's please don't think it's nothing. Oh, it's just an old old Harley shirt. No, it's probably. It could very well be a thousand dollar Harley shirt. Um, the one we sold was like 12, 13, 1400 bucks. I don't remember exactly. We picked it up for like a dollar. Uh, that's probably one of our biggest scores. The other biggest score I've ever had. My parents actually picked up an old Bible, like an old Mormon Bible from, I don't remember, the 1700s or something, 1800s. I don't remember when it was from. It was old. Um, probably the 1800s or something like that. But anyway, it was an old Mormon Bible and it sold for like, $2,400. They picked it up for like 10 bucks at, at a, like seven bucks in the state sale. Um, crazy. Those are probably the two craziest. Uh, we also, uh, remember, I uh, remember coming across Hewitt. Is it Hewitt? It's an old army, 1980s arm, uh, army watch made by Hewer. I think it was, uh, which is now Bulova or I don't know who they are now. I think it was Hewer. But it's a different company now that bought them out. But anyway, it was an old Army watch that was like a name brand watch that was the Army issue. And it, it was it's super rare. It sold for like right around 900 or 1200 or something like that. It was crazy. It was over 1000 It was like $1,200. And we got it in a storage unit. So um, anyway, so the next thing, let me grab these, is Harley. I'm talking about Harley stuff. Uh, Harley, if I can find them, I haven't seen them in forever. Um, some Harley sandals. Where are these sandals at? Usually I got shoes in here, not sandals, so I don't know. Oh, I think that's it right there. Yep. All right, so these Harley sandals I got. Shoot, it's probably been a year maybe since I got these. Uh, no, maybe not a year. Yeah, maybe a year. But anyway, some Harley women's Harley sandals. Uh, they were, I remember these specifically came in a bundle with like a helmet and some other stuff and the helmet and the everything else already sold. So this just cash money on that. That's like, that sold for $17 plus shipping. The shirt sold for $16 plus shipping. So um, I got to get labels for those two because they were technically supposed to ship out today. But as we've already tested and confirmed, your account won't get a ding if you got next day shipping. So if anybody wants to argue that point, you can go ahead. But if you have next day shipping set up and you happen to not get that stuff out the next day, as long as you get those labels in, just like I'm doing right now, technically it's not going to be late. I'm going to get it out Friday only because it's uh, the 4th is tomorrow. So I don't think they're doing any pickup or mail tomorrow. Maybe they are. I don't think they are. Pretty sure they're not. So... It'll go out Friday. In fact, they're not because it's already shows me Friday is the next ship date for my stuff. So tomorrow it skips tomorrow and it'll ship out Friday. 
and I won't get a ding on the account or anything like that. So I'm going to get these labels printed. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys. It's hot. It's hot, man. It's, it's, it's been hot. I went out golfing today, uh, just to the driving range. So I had to wear my little college shirt. So went out, went out try, try, trying to, trying to be a golfer. Uh, I'm not very good. In fact, I'm terrible, but you know, I'm trying. So that's all that matters. Uh, but that's it for you, uh, for me tonight, guys. I appreciate y'all hanging out. Um, decent sales, but really what saved me was the, 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 the tulip stand, the tulip speakers, which have been sitting there for, I don't know, probably about eight months or so they've been sitting there, but that saved me for the, for the last, uh, for the day. So we definitely had a good day Four seventy nine oh eight eight items Four seventy nine oh eight. So that's all I got for y'all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. I'm starting to sweat. I can feel it I'm starting to sweat. Um, but enjoy the rest of your day. Have a wonderful evening, and I will see you guys. Have a wonderful 4th of July. I will see y'all Friday. Bye, everybody.